I feel a mighty anointing in this studio right now. Welcome to Face to Face. With me, I have special guest, a man of God, a brother. I love him dearly. Britt Hancock is married to Audrey, his wonderful wife. He has four beautiful children. They burn for Jesus. They are missionaries in Mexico. God is using them mightily. I want you to welcome to Face to Face, Britt Hancock. Thank you. Love you, my brother. Love you too. Listen, I want to get right in because I feel the Holy Spirit right now. I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit right now. Jesus' cry to his disciples was for the harvest. It was for souls. In Matthew 9, 37, 38, he speaks this. He says, he says to his disciples, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out harvesters into his field. It is the cry for souls, the cry for the harvest that is the cry of Jesus. I want you to talk to us how we need to hear the cry of God right now. Mm -hmm. That it says in Acts that we would see the reward of his suffering. He deserves the reward of his suffering. Yeah. That word, pray the Lord of the harvest, send workers into the harvest field. In Greek, that's ekbalo. You know about that word? It's the same word used when Jesus explained expel demons out of people. It means to thrust into with violent force. And so, um, in 1989, I had an encounter with Jesus on a mountainside right as I was going full-time in the ministry. And he told me, essentially, I want you to recruit, train, place, and pastor missionaries. In order to do that, I had to become a missionary. And right after I was a young missionary, I bounced out to this village on the backside of nowhere in Mexico. Couldn't speak Spanish yet, hardly. And um, was getting ready to go in to have church. And I'm the preacher, right? I'm supposed to preach. And I didn't know enough Spanish. My wife had to write down the message on, on the paper. I was just going to stand up and read it. I mean, that's, that's what a great missionary I was. I couldn't even talk. And uh, I was standing there, and it was right before service started. And the, the little worship band, the little trio was playing in this little bitty bamboo church house hut. And they started plucking the strings. And uh, I saw the Lord Jesus appear right in front of me. And it's true what they say about his eyes. They are fire. And when they look at you, they reduce you to molecules. Like he's reading the, the genetic code on every gene in your body. And there's... There's nowhere you can go. There's nothing you can do. <clears throat> and it just seized me. And I was standing by this little bitty tree about yay big around. And um, I got transfixed. And he grew really tall and jerked my spirit out of my body. And I kind of went up in the air. When I say really tall, I mean, well, I'll tell you how like, I could probably figure it out. It's however long from that section of Mexico that one, it would take for one step to reach down into the country of Guatemala. I don't know how many miles, however many miles it was. And, and we were stepping and I was looking down, watching the ground and all the mountains and towns and cities and villages rush by and his foot was coming down and there was this giant hole in the earth and it was black as coal, and the sides were shaped like funnels. And people were sliding down in the hole, and I could smell the smells coming out of hell. It was a hole to hell. And people were sliding in. And I could hear the screams. And it's not a good place. But he put his foot dead over the floor, and he said, look straight at me. And he said, where are the ones I sent here to stop this? I don't know. I mean, I don't have an answer. Where are you? I don't know where you are. But I was there. And then we stepped to another country. We stepped from there down into Central America. Same thing. Another hole. Souls sliding into hell. Screaming. Smells like you can't imagine. But his foot would seal it up and he would look dead at me and he would say, where are the ones I sent here to stop this? Find replacements and help them stay. And we stepped down to South America 
and to multiple holes and the same thing. Where are the ones I sent here to stop this? Find workers, help them stay. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. How do I answer that? I don't know what to do about it. I feel lost. I feel like the worst missionary on planet earth. I can't even talk. I, I, I went from a thriving ministry in the United States where everything, it seemed like everything that I did succeeded to being a glorified taxi driver who couldn't even talk to people. I was lost. I was scared. I was intimidated. And Jesus is burning me to my core. Where are the ones I sent? We stepped across the ocean to Africa and all around Asia, multiple holes. Where are the ones I sent? 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 Find replacements and help them stay. That's what he said to me. And I didn't, I didn't know. But I've been trying to go down that road ever since because what I ran into was the force of Ekbalo to be thrust into the harvest with violent force. It's the same thing you feel. That's the impetus of the fire of God when you're standing there and it's pouring through you and everybody goes, wow, or ooh, or ah, but they don't get it. It's the fire of heaven. The violent force of the heart of God for souls. And everywhere I turn, people are so selfish and so stuck in this life. They're so consumed by this earthly citizenship that they have and the comfort that they have that they are content to let everybody around them go straight to hell. But it's blinders. People are blind, deaf, and dumb. And I get trapped in that, that equation, that intensity Because that's not sustainable when you're trying to help somebody move from where they are toward where they're going. So I have to learn how to be nice and let my wife pat me on the back and calm me down. But I had that vision every single day for six weeks. And it changed my life. It marked you. It marked me. And then besides that, I've seen him 35 other times and every single time that I've seen him for my assignment, he talks to me about the lost state of the world. So I don't buy it that Americans can no longer, that, that, that the Great Commission is no longer valid for Americans because we're too expensive and we're too, too complicated and we don't stay and we always quit. We've been tracking mission statistics for 80 years and for the last 80 years we've had no appreciable increase in the success rate of missionaries. We're caving in. Every year we lose 5% of the missionary force on this, on, on, in the world. 5%. 10 years, there's 50% turnover. 20 years, it's 100%. We're caving in. Why? I don't know why. But we're trying to move forward. And so in an effort to help people stay, we, got a, we, we formed a school. I'm, 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 I'm doing my best to follow the step yes. of Jesus. Yeah. One time I was bringing these brand new missionaries in Mexico. <coughs> I was training them in. And we were out for five days, hiking from village to village, doing three services a day, sleeping in the village, um, in the mountains in Mexico. And, and we were about, we were, we were on the fourth day We had spent the night at this place having done three villages and we walked past dozens of villages the last five days that didn't have any gospel. And I would stop and point out to those guys, you know why we can't go there? You know why? Because we don't have enough help. And if we go there right now, people will get born again. Why don't you go? Because there's a limit to what we can do. We already preach 30 days a month, every single day, sometimes three three or four or five times a day. I've done that in my life. And so we're walking along. We get to this village. After 12 hours, my feet were so sore, half bleeding. I get there, and I'm mad at the, guy, the new missionaries that were with me. I'm just mad, having a bad attitude of everywhere. They, 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 they forgot to, to leave the message that we were coming. So there were no people that came to the church service. Five days of eating food that I didn't like sleeping on the floor, waiting on daylight with new missionaries who I know are going to quit. I just had a bad attitude. 
I'm laying there. No, we get to the church service. The guy comes in there. He's got one guitar with his cheap old, old cheap guitar without a rod in the neck. So it goes out of tune every single song he plays, and two of the strings are broke. And he can't carry a tune in a bucket. And the only people that were there were us and his two daughters and him. Nobody came. And I was mad as spit. Don't you know that God's man of power for the hour hiked 12 hours to get five days and 12 hours today to get here and there's no people to hear me preach? How dare you? So stupid how arrogant we are. And so I'm sitting there, but I'm going to tell you what happened. That man, his name was Michael. He picked up that broken down guitar and he started playing in this off tune. And he struck the first chords. And the Holy Ghost knocked me down. And when I say he knocked me down, I don't mean I fell down. I mean he knocked me to the ground. And, you know, one of the, one of the meanings of glory is weight. Well, the weight of the glory of God sat down on me and I thought it was going to break my ribs. It was smashing me in that dirt floor so hard. I've felt that. I've had that happen. Oh, yeah. You know. And he mashed me into the ground and that man was singing off key and nobody would buy the song. He wouldn't go on iTunes and nobody would think that God was anywhere around. And I'm laying there with my back to the door and all of a sudden somehow I could see through the back of my head and the king of kings who has hair white like wool and eyes like fire and feet like burnished bronze shows up in the back door you know what he was doing? He was watching that nobody Indian pastor worship him with all his heart. <laughs> and then I started hearing. I started seeing and hearing all those villages that we passed by, that we hiked through, that we couldn't go in, that didn't have the gospel for the previous five days. I started hearing a stream of names. And it was the voice of Jesus from inside that village calling names. Just one name, right after the other, right after the other, right after the other. And somehow my brain could track. There were, do there were dozens of villages. And he was calling from every village. And then from the doorway, he says to me, while I'm listening to all that, I am in every house, village, town, city, on this earth where my name is not named calling calling workers to the harvest field few can hear me call the few that do hear me most of them don't stay find replacements help them stay. And I've had a whole train load of encounters like that. Uh, I don't know why. I guess because I'm extra hard-headed and he's trying to get me to understand what he wants me to do. But I got the picture. I got a copy on it. So I don't care about nothing else. I don't care. Um, I know for a fact he is not happy about the lost state of the world and I know for a fact that there are multitudes who do not hear that they themselves are being called by God. And it may not be to go to the backside of nowhere. It may be to go to, to, go to your neighbor. I mean, come on. Do you go to the grocery store, the same grocery store every day? Learn the checkout lady's name. Pray for her by name and open your mouth. Come on. Because everybody can lead somebody to Jesus. I don't care about nothing else. And it makes people uncomfortable. But I can't do anything about it. So uh, um, there was a time in my life, multiple years, where that, that, cap that dominated my life. And, 
and drove me. And I can tell you that a mandate from God can be a terrible taskmaster. And the thing that, in, that insulated me from the fire of those encounters is deep in intimacy with Jesus. And that's why what I told you before on, on the first thing that we did, that intimacy is the insulator. Because we cannot contain God how he is when he really starts peeling back the layers of who he is, how he is. And we, and we encounter him in a, in a, in a confluence of, he, he is an all-consuming fire. What that means is, is every single attribute of who he is is all-consuming at one time. And there's some paradoxical stuff there. Love and wrath. Well, when you get those two things in the room and it's being all-consuming all at once, you cannot contain it. Yeah. War and peace. Judgment and mercy. God's got lots of attributes. And he's, when every now and then, he will leak out just a little bit of himself. And the little bit that comes our way, we can't, we can't contain it. We can't handle it. See, you know, Britt, I, 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 I tell my team and that the call of God, when you're mocked by the Holy Spirit, there's this, there's this pulling constantly because one day we know we're going to stand before our King. That's right. And some days that keeps me awake at night. It keeps me awake at night because I'm going to stand before him. And I don't ever want to be in that place. You know, I, I hear people talk about, you know, I can't wait, you know, just to get to heaven. I can't too. I cry. Come, come Lord Jesus. But in the same way, fears my heart, the fear of the Lord, that when we stand there, that we'd say, Lord, we did everything that we could do. That's right. How can and we not? Go on, talk. How can we not? I don't get it. I don't understand. I don't want to understand. I don't want to relate. I don't care about relating to people. If uh, I just care about one thing, and, and that's walking... Seeking Jesus with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. Yeah. I want my life to radiate the life of God. And when I get within 50 feet of somebody, they are changed and I don't have to say nothing. And I don't want to have to have God speak to me. I want to know him so well that he can guide me with his eyes without saying nothing. I want to exceed mere obedience. The obedience is the threshold. It's not the goal. It's not the end. It's the beginning. He ain't got no limits. He don't have any limits. And we can do it. We can walk with God on this earth if we just seek Him with all our hearts. You put it all on the table and don't take it back. But the problem is we're going to take it back we're going to take back our life. That's why he said, deny yourself, take up your cross every day and follow me. Why did he say every day and who's it written to? It's written to me. It's written to me, Britt Hancock. He said every day because I, he knows I take my life back every day. <laughs> who's it to? It's to me. It's not written to us. It's written to me. When I say us, I can crawfish out of it. No, it's written to me. I don't, I don't know what you're going to do, but I got I to respond and if I don't have the power and the wherewithal to, 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 to be obedient, I'm going to fall on my face and on the altar of God until I get grace enough to have enough power to get my behind up off the ground and take some more steps. If I can't run forward, I'm going to walk forward. And if I can't walk forward, I'm going to crawl forward. And if I can't crawl forward, I'm going to lean forward. And if I can't lean forward, I'm going to think forward. But I will not stop. Period. And may I ever be so. But I want you to speak to people at home right now that I know the Lord is moving in a mighty way. There's an incredible, incredible presence of the Lord here right now. I want you to pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers, workers. You know, in every generation there comes a cry from God's heart. And God uses vessels to release that cry to a generation. 
And I feel like right now we've come out of this pandemic and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, there's a new era coming. I'm, sent, I'm about to raise up a mighty, mighty voice. And I don't mean a single person. I mean a sound. It's the voice of God yeah. through millions. Yeah. It's going to be the cry. And I feel right. like it's rising right now. And uh, it's coming like a wave. It's going to come like a wave across the nations of the world. I want you to speak to those that God is calling to right now, that they would hear the cry of God's heart. Jesus. All I know, Lord, is to do what you said. Yes, Lord. Lord of the harvest. Yes, Lord. I pray that you thrust out yes, Lord. with violent force yes, and all consuming power and fire and energy and grace and life and balance and maturity and zeal and balance and truth and spirit. Workers into your harvest field, Lord. We don't have a harvest problem. We have a worker problem. You said that. I've not been one place on this planet, Lord, that you've sent me, that I've not found people ready to get saved, that have gotten saved. Not one place. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus right now that you seize shepherds and people of influence, yes, that Lord. they would resonate your call, yes, that they Lord. would respond themselves, starting with the person next to them. Establish their identity as God. Yes, Lord. Assassinate the devil and his schemes and his plans yes. laid against your people, Lord. And the deceit that, li- that, that lives in us, we're so easily knocked off center. Yes. Help us track God. Help us encounter you. Help us in the name of Jesus tap into the heart of the Lord of the harvest. Yes, Lord. Nobody can do that but you, Lord. We die for lack of connection with yes, you, Lord. Jesus. Please do this thing. Yes, Holy Spirit. And every pastor out there whom it's been so long since they uttered a call in their pulpits, shake them up, God. Yes, Lord. Bust them between the eyes, Father, with the Holy Ghost. Yes, Father. Put them down on the floor and weigh them down with, with your heart. Yes, Lord. For first those that are around them that are lost and dying, that they may be compelled to care about others. Yes, Jesus. Because you make us into fishers of men, God. Please do this thing. Yes, Lord. Without you, we can do nothing. Yes, Lord. Not one thing. We are nothing without you. Yes, Lord. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and And the the end, end, the first and the last. The Son of God, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ the righteous. The captain of the host of heaven. A nail in its your place that we can hold on to. A great physician, the balm of Gilead, the rose of Sharon, our hope of glory. In Jesus' name, Lord. In Jesus' name. Give me a hand, brother. Father, we declare, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, rouse up your warriors. Rise up, Lord, those that will be bold to preach without compromise. The Lord, they will stand and they will declare that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Lord, I pray that you would release those into the nations of the world, that they would run with fire, that they would be as bold as lions, that, Lord, they would lay hands on the sick, they would cast out devils, that will not be ashamed. Jesus. The power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. So, Lord, in Jesus' name, may we not fail. Jesus. May we not fail in that which you have commissioned and called your church in this hour. God. And for your glory, Lord, Jesus. may we see the reward of your suffering. Jesus. The Lord, on that day, on that day, Lord, we will stand before you. And here, well done. Thou In Jesus' faithful. name. Lord, I pray that we would not just start, but we would finish. Yes. We would finish. That we would cross the finishing line. Jesus. By your Jesus. grace and your truth alone. In Jesus' name.
Jesus. Lord, bless my brother. May he be, Lord, one who, Lord, lets the clarion call be heard. That, Lord, you would give him a mighty army of harvesters that they will take territory. Jesus. That has never been taken for the kingdom of God. Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, this has been a face-to-face that normally we have a certain time, but I just felt that the Lord spoke to me and said, let it go. So this has been a special that we've just let it run. It is what it is. It's the heart of God to our generation. I want you to hear that call. All you have to do is say yes. Have your way, Lord. Take the steps. And he'll do the rest. If I could tell you the amount of times that I've sat and said to so many men and women, young evangelists that have come to see us, and I said, look around you. This is all nothing without Jesus. He did it all. I can't take one molecule and say it was me. It was all him. It is all him. It'll always be him. He is the Lord of the harvest. So in Jesus' name, receive that fire and say yes Jesus. to Jesus. We love you. God bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. We want to thank you for watching. If you want to know more about Shake the Nations Ministries and our YouTube channel, why don't you click the subscribe button? Also, if you want notifications of our brand new videos, why don't you click the bell? There's so much more in Shake the Nations Ministries that you can get involved in. Why don't you click also the link to our website to find out more? To find out more about our humanitarian arm, Hope of All Nations, make sure you click the Hope of All Nations button where you can learn about us taking the gospel to thousands of children around the world and our work in the ground of the nation of Honduras. We can't wait to see you next time.